Nixon ends convertibility of US dollars to gold and announces wage slash price controls. August 1971. With inflation on the rise and a gold run looming, President Richard Nixon's team enacted a plan that ended dollar convertibility to gold and implemented wage and price controls, which soon brought an end to the Bretton Woods system. President Richard Nixon's actions in 1971 to end dollar convertibility to gold and implement wage slash price controls were intended to address the international dilemma of a looming gold run and the domestic problem of inflation. The new economic policy marked the beginning of the end of the Bretton Woods international monetary system and temporarily halted inflation. The international monetary system after World War II was dubbed the Bretton Woods system after the meeting of 44 countries in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, in 1944. The countries agreed to keep their currencies fixed, but adjustable in exceptional situations, to the dollar, and the dollar was fixed to gold. Since 1958, when the Bretton Woods system became operational, countries settled their international balances in dollars, and you. S. Dollars were convertible to gold at a fixed exchange rate of $35 an ounce. The United States had the responsibility of keeping the dollar price of gold fixed and had to adjust the supply of dollars to maintain confidence in future gold convertibility. Initially, the Bretton Woods system operated as planned. Japan and Europe were still rebuilding their post war economies and demand for U.S. goods and services, and dollars, was high. Since the United States held about three quarters of the world's official gold reserves, the system seemed secure. In the 1960s, European and Japanese exports became more competitive with U.S. exports. The U.S. share of world output decreased and so did the need for dollars, making converting those dollars to gold more desirable. The deteriorating U.S balance of payments, combined with military spending and foreign aid, resulted in a large supply of dollars around the world. Meanwhile, the gold supply had increased only marginally. Eventually, there were more foreign-held dollars than the United States had gold. The country was vulnerable to a run on gold and there was a loss of confidence in the U.S. government's ability to meet its obligations thereby threatening both the dollar's position as reserve currency and the overall Bretton Woods system. Many efforts were made to adjust the U.S. balance of payments and to uphold the Bretton Woods system, both domestically and internationally. These were meant to be quick fixes until the balance of payments could readjust, but they proved to be postponing the inevitable. In March 1961, the U.S. Treasury's Exchange Stabilization Fund, ESF, with the Federal Reserve Bank of New York acting as its agent, began to intervene in the foreign exchange market for the first time since World War II. The ESF buys and sells foreign exchange currency to stabilize conditions in the exchange rate market. While the interventions were successful for a time, the Treasury's lack of resources limited its ability to mount broad dollar defense.